Okay, so we're going to go over this genetics worksheet. I um, just wanted to give you um, a comprehensive um, idea on how to do these problems. Again, your exam is going to be something similar to these problems. All right, so we'll start with the curled ear cats. Curled ears in cats is caused by a mutated gene that has been developed into a breed known as the American curl. We have a picture of that. Cat with curled ears, okay, was mated with a cat with normal ears, and all of the offspring have curled ears. Okay, so now we know that curled is a dominant trait. Okay, so that's his first question. Is this trait dominant or recessive? It's dominant because curled ears were all that we had when we <coughs> mated the two. What is the genotype of the curled eared cat? Okay, so because, okay, so a good thing to do is to first, now, all right, let's pr provide uh, genes. Let's assign genes for these. So curled, we're going to say is big C, and normal is going to be little c. Okay, and we know that it's dominant, and a cat with curled ears was mated with a normal eared cat, so we can do a Punnett square. <clears throat> the normal ear we know was little c, little c, but we don't know if the big ear was big c, big c, or big c, little c. If it was big c, big c, then all of the progeny would have the curled phenotype, which is what happened. If it was big C, little c, then you would have 50% of them normal and the other 50% curled. Now this is a probability. It doesn't mean that that necessarily could happen. So one of the things this ignores is that just by probability, you could still have them all be curled just by chance, but more than likely you would have some that are normal and some that are curled. So we're gonna say the genotype of the curled eared cat is big C, big C. Okay, <clears throat> if one of the kittens from the above cross, so we're looking at these kittens now, Okay, big C, little c, was mated with a cat with normal ears, little c, little c, what percentage of the offspring would have curled ears? Okay, let's do a Punnett square. Big C, little c, little c, little c. Okay, and so we would have two with curled and two with normal, so 50%. Okay, next question. In horses, red color is recessive to spotted. So let's just get that out of the way. We're going to say spotted is big R, red is little r. If a heterozygous spotted male, all right, a heterozygous, that means he has one of each male, is crossed to a chestnut female, little r, little r, what is the genotype of phenotype? typical ratio of the offspring, okay? Let's do our Punnett square. Okay, now you may be able to do this without doing the Punnett square, just thinking it through, but this is the best way to make sure that you know what you're doing. So here, these are, have the dominant phenotype, so they are spotted, and these have the recessive homozygous, Phenotype, so they are chestnut. So we have a one to one or 50 to 50, 50% 50 genotype, phenotypic, uh, sorry, genotype ratio is going to be how many do we have big R, big R to big R, little r to little r, little r. So it's going to be zero to one to one. 
And the phenotype is phenotypic ratio. That's how many are spotted to red, which is one to one. Okay, so we got that. That's the first page. All right, so on to the second page. Congenital night blindness is caused by a dominant autosomal allele B. So here they give us one, okay? A man is heterozygous for night blindness. So that means, let's just do this. Night blind, you're going to have a big B, right? Normal, little B. So this man is heterozygous. What is his genotype? Oh, well, I already did that, but we'll write it in there. Is he night blind? Well, we said congenital night blindness is caused by a dominant autosomal allele B. So if he has the big B, then yes, he is night blind. His wife is normal. Okay, what is her genotype? Well, she must be this. Okay, because it's a recessive. What is the probability that their firstborn child We'll have night blindness. Okay, well, let's do our, you know, our Punnett square. The male is big B, little b. The female is little b, little b. Fill it in. <clears throat> we have half of them night blind and half of them not night blind. So we're going to say 50%. What is the probability that their second born child will have night blindness? Okay, and so it actually doesn't matter if we're talking about their first or second child. Each one is an independent event, so it's going to be the same, 50%. All right, a man is homozygous for night blindness. Well, we know night blindness is the big B. So if he's homozygous, he's big B, big B. His wife is normal. Well. We know that's a little b, little b. What proportion of their children will have night blindness? Well, we don't have to do the Punnett square, but we're going to anyway. Just to show you, well, if he's dominant and he can only donate a big B, then all it doesn't matter what his wife has, because that's going to be dominant. So what percentage will have night blindness? 100%. What proportion of their grandchildren have night blindness? blindness if all their children marry normal spouses. Well, here's their children. Okay, normal is little b, little b. So we're talking about a cross between big b, little b, and little b, little b. Okay, and we've done this same cross a couple times. All right, so 50% night blind, 50% normal. Okay. All right. In pea plants, purple flowers is dominant to white flowers. They gave us the genes already there. Tall is dominant to short. You have a purple flowered tall plant. Okay, so it's P, we don't know. Question mark. Tall, T, we don't know. But you do not know the genotype. Draw out the possible combination of alleles. This plant is homozygous for both plates, traits. Well, if it's homozygous, it's big P, big P, big T, big T. And the alleles that it can do uh, donate then, well, it can only donate a big P and a big T, right? So we don't have to fill out these other four. Draw out the possible combination of alleles. This plant is heterozygous for both traits. Well, if it's heterozygous, it's like this means we have different on each. And now we can have our first inner, outer, and last, our FOIL method. So big P, big T, big P, little T, little P, big T, little P, little T. Those are the four different combinations. All right. Page three, short hair is dominant to long hair. All right, we're going to just say short hair is big S, long hair is little s. If a short-haired animal of unknown origin, okay, 
it's short haired but we don't know what the second thing is is crossed with a long haired animal okay if they're long then they're little s little s and they produce one long haired and one short haired what is your conclusion about the genotype of the short haired animal okay well again let's just do a punnett square if it is we're wondering if it's big s li, big s or big s little s right and they <coughs> um, it's crossed with a long haired animal both times all right if it's big s big s then all of the offspring are the same they are all long haired but it produced one long haired and one short haired which can only occur if it is a heterozygote so what is it it has to be this one can't be that one it is a heterozygote All right, the results of a test cross reveal that all the F offspring resemble the parent being tested. That's what we did here. A test cross is a cross with a homozygous recessive, and if all of them resemble the parent, that parent is homozygous dominant, which over here would be big S, big S, not big S, little s. Okay? Alright, dihybrid cross. Guinea pigs. Rough coat is dominant over smooth. Rough. Big R. Smooth. Little r. Black coat is dominant over white. Black. Big B. White. Little b. These genes are located on separate chromosomes, so we know they sort independently. Cross a homozygous rough-coated black male with a smooth coated white female. What is the genotype? Well, the, he can only give a big R and a big B. She can only give a little R and a big B. So they are big R, little R, big B, little B, all of the offspring. Cross two individuals from F1. And now we have a diversity of things. Okay, so this one can donate four different combinations. Again, the first outer, inner, last can be R, big R, big B, big R, little B, little R, big B, little R, little B. And the same on this side. And now we're just going to complete it in. All right. So, <clears throat> how many of that F2? This is the F2 generation. Have their parent genotype. Ugh. Okay, 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 okay. So, how many of these are big R, little r, big B, little b? Well, and you have to come through and count them, right? So here's one, here's two, here's three, here's four. And I think that's it, right? Okay, how many have the same phenotype? Okay, well, that's going to be any of them that have a big R and a big B. So that's going to include these four plus this five, six, seven, eight, nine. But not this one because these have either little r's with big b's or 
uh, little bees with big arcs, right? So not. Okay, proportion of F2 with their grandmother's genotype. Well, the grandmother was little r, little r, little b, little b. And there's only one of those. And the grandfather's genotype. Well, he was big R, big R, big B, big B. And there's only one of those. One. Okay. Guinea pigs can also vary in the color of their paws. The allele for red paw is incompletely dominant. Okay, so that means it's kind of blended. All right, so let's say R, big R is red, little r is white. A male guinea pig that has pink paws, well, it's big R, little r, and black fur, big B, little b, is crossed with a female with pink paws. Uh, it is also big R, little r, and white fur. Okay, the Punnett square. Well, let's first do across the top here. That is going to be our heterozygous for both. So that can be big R, big B, big R, little b, little r, big B, little r, little b. Okay. But the female only has two different combinations. It can, because it has the same. So it can only big R, little b, little r, little b. And so we don't have to draw out the huge Punnett square this time. That's it. And then fill these in. What is the ratio of black fur and red paws? So how many have black fur and red paws? Okay, so again, black was big B. Right? So this has black and red, but red has to be homozygous. So it's only this one, right? Because this one's pink, pink. Pink, pink, white, white, red with black, red with um, whatever little B was, white. So one out of eight. What is the ratio of black fur and pink? Pause. Well, this is black, pink, black, pink. So two out of eight, or one out of four. What's the ratio of black fur and white paws? Well, that's going to be big B, little b, right? Black. So that's only one out of eight. White fur and red paws. Well, these are the red ones. That one has white fur. So one out of eight again. White fur and pink paws. Okay. All of these are pink. How many of them have white fur? This one has white fur. This one has white fur. So two out of eight or one out of four. All right, finally, white fur and white paws. Well, that's going to be this right here, right? White, white, one out of eight. Now, if I did that right, which I think I did. All right. Now, A, B, and O types. So this one's different. A and B are codominant. O is recessive and is often not mentioned in the blood type. So if you have type A blood, you can be AA or 
A O. Her child has type O blood. Two potential fathers are Mr. X with type A and Mr. Y with type AB. Draw the Punnett square. Well, she, her child has O blood, which means she had to have donated an O here. So she can't be AA. She has to be AO. So if she's AO, the potential fathers are AB. And Mr. X is type A, so he could also be AA or AO. So if you want to do a third one, AA, AO. But we know this one can only produce A blood. Okay, This one can produce A or B, but cannot produce O. So this guy must be the father, which is Mr. X. Okay, again, it's because when you fill in these Punnett squares, oops, I did these wrong. So this one not work. This one, A, 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 O, A, O, O, O. All right, this one would work, but that one wouldn't. This one can't work. Because then none of them have type O blood. What is the genotype of Miss A? Well, she has to be AO. We already determined that. If a child belonged to type blood, blood type O, so a child has type O blood, he or she could not have been produced by which set of parents? Well, again, if you have A or B, that means you can be AO or BO. So that one would work. AO and O works. AB cannot donate an O. So she cannot... Um, produce O O blood. O with O of course can, O with B can. So the only one that doesn't work is C. Alright, incomplete dominance. Snapdragons. Red is R is red flowers. Little R is white and heterozygotes are incomplete which means they are pink. So R R red R R pink Little r white. What is the typical genotypic ratio of a cross between two heterozygotes? Well, it's going to be 1 to 2 to 1, right? R, 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 R. 1 homozygous dominant to two heterozygotes to one recessive which is going to be red to pink to white so this one's kind of interesting but in terms of gene expression and production of enzymes explain what mechanism for how incomplete dominance can exist well a heterozygote must produce less than a homozygote. Okay. <clears throat> under what let me see. Yeah, under what conditions do heterozygotes assume a dominant phenotype? Well that would be heterozygotes produce <coughs> the same as homozygotes. So if R produces an amount of a red pigment, the big R, and you're a heterozygote, incomplete dominance can exist if the ones that are heterozygotes just don't produce as much, and so it turns out it's pink. Whereas if they're a dominant phenotype, heterozygotes and homozygotes would produce the same amount, or at least enough of amount to where the, it's, it looks the same. Um, of the gene product. Okay. Explain why the height is a polymorphic trait in the human population. What kind of trait is human height? Well, it's continuous, right? You can be anywhere 
you aren't just tall or short, you're five foot whatever to six foot whatever. Can you think of other examples? We talked about, you know, length of bones. Um, Uh, eye color, kind of. Um, you know, how fast your fingernails grow, stuff like that. And so it's a polymorphic trait because many, gene, many genes control the expression. Okay. What is pleiotropy? So that's one gene has multiple effects. How does one mutated gene product in sickle cell disease cause pleiotropic effects? Well, it affects um, uh, oxygen consumption, uh, metabolic rate, um, and a whole host of other traits that have to do with how well your red blood cell um, functions. Okay, circulation, etc. All right, epistasis. So we did this one in class. Coat color in mice determined by two genes which show it as epistasis pigment. Epistasis pigment is only produced when an N allele is present. So the N equals on or off. Okay, and big N is off, little N is, sorry, big N is on, little N is off. Individuals of the NN genotype have no color. Okay, and N just says, okay, we're going to have color. If color is determined, um, is present, it's determined by one of two alleles, agouti and bard, little a. So now we can know what the different combinations are. If it's big N, little n, big N, big N, it's going to have color. If it's little n, little n, it's going to be white. Okay? If it is big A, so if it has the big N and the big A, it can be a goody. If not, it's going to be barred. But let's say <clears throat> it's little and little n and it has any of these. These are all going to be white because they don't have the gene for color. So two completely homozygous parents for both traits. All right, big N, big N, big A, big A, little N, little N, little A, little A. And they are all going to be this, right? Now cross and draw the Punnett square. Well, okay, I'll take a while. In a, in a. Yeah. 
Whew. All right, so now all of these are white because they have the little in, little in. Doesn't matter what this second one is. <clears throat> they have the off gene, so they aren't going to produce color. All of these produce color, but what type? Well, these are going to be agouti, 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 agouti. So all of these would be agouti. So nine agouti. Uh, <clears throat> one, two, three barred. And four white. There you go. All right, another epistasis problem. Color in Labrador's trait that exhibits uh, epistasis. Yellow labs have a big A, little e. Brown have little a, big E. And black have big A, big E. Okay? A yellow Labrador retriever of the genotype AAEE -E -E was crossed with the brown retriever of the genotype AAEE. -E -E. F F1 would be all the same, right? And that's going to be this black genotype. All right, <clears throat> on to the next one, pedigree analysis. So pedigree analysis, um, male, female, and then if it's colored in, they have the condition, whatever it is. All right, is this dominant or recessive? Okay, so if it's black, they both have it, and one of their children does not. Now, if it was, there's only one way that that can occur, and that is if they are both heterozygotes and it's a recessive allele. Okay? If it's recessive, then these are both little a's, right? And all of their children would have it. There's no way they could do that. So it can't be that. If it's dominant and they're big A, big A, well, that also couldn't happen because then all of them would have it. So the only way this can occur is if they are heterozygotes, okay? So this person got both of it. Recessive. Well, So it is dominant, but the only way this person could not get it is by getting the recessive alleles, which are normal. So that's what you put there. One child does has the normal recessive allele. So this person must have gotten both of them. Well, this person also. Okay, and so the only way that person could have it is if it's like this as well. Those are normals. This person got the trait. All right, this next one's a little harder. Albinism in humans is caused by the inheritance of a pair of recessive autosomal alleles. Okay, so let's say there, little b, little b. Use the given family pedigree to solve the following problems. What is the genotype of 4, 1, 4, 3, 4, 4, and 4, 11? So these ones, okay. Okay, so all of these people don't have it. Okay, but then 7 and 8 has a child in which it is expressed. Okay, so the only way that they cannot have it and they have it is if these two are heterozygotes. Okay, so let's, sorry, use different things. And it's a recessive trait, right? 
well, if their parents don't have it, so seven doesn't have it, but is a carrier, it has to be recessive. All right, not seven. Two and three. Same thing. And so the only way one, two, three, and four can have it is if they are recessive. What are the genotypes of 3, 2, 3, 3, 3, 7, 3, 8? Okay, so these are the parents, right? Which we already determined. They have to be heterozygotes. Assuming 2, 4 is a, a, 2, 4 is a, a. What is the probability that 3, 4 is heterozygous for albinism? Okay, there's supposed to be a line there. Well, if that one's AA and these have to be heterozygotes, then this person has to be AA. So what's the probability that they're heterozygote? Well, has to get a big A there. Well, we can do the Punnett square real quick. Big A, big A, big A, little i. It's a 50-50 percent. Okay, what is the probability that IV6, oh, that's this guy, okay, is homozygous for normal, okay? Well, we know the parents are big A, little a. So this one is homozygous normal, so it would have to be. That's one out of four, right? 25%. All right. Now we're getting to X linked. All right, that means it's on the X chromosome. In fruit flies, eye color is a sex linked trait. Red is dominant to white. So XR is red, X little r is white. What are the sexes and eye colors of the following genotypes? Well, this is a female, right? And it has red. Well, that's a male. It also has red. But this is a female and has little r's, so it is white. Female, red again, and male white. Okay, the Y is like having nothing, so we can ignore the Ys when you have a Y there, and that's what's going to be expressed. What are the genotypes of these flies? If you're a white-eyed male, well, we know you're XY. If you have white eyes, you have to have the little r there. If you're a red-eyed female and you're heterozygous, well, all you have to know is that they're heterozygous, and you know they have one of each. But just to check, is it red-eyed? Yes. White-eyed female. You're female if you have two X's. And if it's white-eyed, it has to have the recessive for both. And we already said that up there. Red-eyed male. Well, your XY. You only have one that works. So it has to be like that. Show the cross between a white-eyed female and a red-eyed male. So those are going to be red females. Those are going to be white males. White eyed anyway. Show a cross between a pure red female, okay, that means she has both big R's, and a white eyed male. What are the genotypes? of the, fit, the parents. Oops. All right, so across. Oh, those are the parents. Okay. These are the parents. 
How many are white eyed? Well, let's do the cross first. Hi, okay, wide eyed males, how many do we have? None. Wide eyed females, how many do we have? None. How many red eyed males? Two. Out of four. How many red eyed females? Two out of four. Alright, show the cross of a red eyed female, heterozygous, and a red eyed male. Genotypes of the parents. Do the cross here, x big R, x little r, x big R, y. How many are white-eyed males? Well, one out of four. How many are white-eyed females? Zero. How many are red-eyed males? Well, one out of four. And how many are red-eyed females? Well, two out of four. What if in the above cross, 100 males were produced and 200 females? How many total red flies, red-eyed flies would there be? So this is just a ratio, but if we had 100 males, we would know that all of them would be white-eyed. Wait, no, no. Half would be white-eyed and half would be red. So 50 red males, 50 white males, 200 females, well we know if there were 200 females all of them would be red. How many total red-eyed flies would there be? 250 approximately. Alright, human sex linkage. In humans, hemophilia is a sex link trait. Females can be normal carriers or have the disease. Males will have either disease or not, but they won't ever be carriers. They define it all here for us. Show the cross of a man who has hemophilia, that's this guy, XHY, and a woman who is a carrier, that means she is heterozygous. What is the probability that their children will have the disease? I drew this kind of small. All right, so those ones are fine. X little h, x little h. There's a female that's affected. X little h y, the male that is affected. So two out of four, fifty percent whether they're male or female. A woman who is a carrier marries a normal man. Show the cross. Okay, I'm going to draw this one a little bigger. What's probably the children have hemophilia? Well, only this one. So that's one out of four. What sex will a child in the family with hemophilia be? Well, it can only be a male. A woman who has hemophilia. Oh, well, she is X little h, X little h. Marries a normal man. He is X big H, Y. How many of their children will have hemophilia? X big H, X little H, X big H, X little H, X little H, Y, X little H, Y. Well, these are normal. These have it. So 50% and they will all be male. Okay. Let's keep going. Here's a calico's female's genotype. It would look like Big B. X big B, X big R. Ooh, hold on. In cats, the gene for calico 
cats is co-dominant. Females that receive a B and an R gene have a black and orange splotches on white coats. Males can only be black or orange, but never calico, because they only have one X. Calico look like this. Show the cross of a female calico cat with a black male. Okay, so female calico is going to be like this. And he's black, so he's got the B and Y. What percentage of kittens will be black and male? Okay, so how many of them will be black and male? Well, that's only this one. That one's orange or whatever. So one out of four, 25 percent. How much can will be calico and male? Zero. You can't be calico and male because you need two X's. What percentage of the kittens will be calico and female? Not this one, this one right here. So that's one out of four, 25 percent as well. Show the cross of a female black cat with a male orange cat. Okay, female black and a male orange. What percentage of kittens will be calico and female? Well, these ones will both be calico, so it's 50%. What color will all the male cats be? Well, they'll all be black. All right, another page down. All right, last little part, determining linkage or independence. Suppose you want to map the distances between N, genes N and P. Each has two alleles, big N, little N, big P, little P. Both pairs of alleles have complete dominance relationship. We'll identify the phenotype simply by the letters of the alleles. Your mating will be NNPP, NNPP. Okay, so heterozygote with a test cross. If your genes are independent, then your first parent's four possible g gametes in blah, blah, blah. So this is um, the phenotype N, the phenotype P, um, the dominant, <coughs> the heterozygote of each. All right. Anyway, you expect them all to be a hundred, and you could do the um, Punnett square to show that of each of the different combinations. But you get numbers like this, so they are not equal. So they are not independent. Moreover, you know that in your original heterozygous, one chromosome had N and a P on it. Okay, so one of them was like this. And the other had a little N and a little P on it. In other words, your potential linkage is big N with big P and little N with little P. In this example, the parental offspring are the NP and NP are the recombinant. Okay, so where were we? All right. Um, all right, so these were the original chromosomes, right? The big N was with the big P and the little N was the little P. And so the recombinants were the NP, the ones that were the, the fewer, right? So this is where you had crossing over occur. And it made chromosomes that were like this. That's a little p, right? Anyway, all right. So using the example above, the linkage map distance between the N and P gene loci is calculated by calculating the percentage of recombination between the two genes. This is done by adding the number of recombinant offspring, dividing by the total number of offspring, and multiplying by 100 to compare it to a percentage. In this example, we have a total of 100 recombinant offspring. The NP and NP, N, big N, little p, and little N, big p were added together, and overall 400 offspring. So 100 of them divided by 400 total times 100 equals 25%. 25% of our offspring are recombinants. Thus, the linkage map difference between these two is 25 linkage map units, or centimorgans. 
So you are trying, okay, so here's an actual question. Trying to determine if the traits of the feather color and eye color in Brazilian sheep horned owls are on separate chromosomes or the same chromosome. Test cross between a male brown eyed, big P, little P, purple feathered, big P, little P male, and a female blue eyed, little B, little B, pink feathered, little P, little P female produces the following number of offspring with the following traits. Are these all genes on the same chromosome? Okay. Well, we would expect a big P, a heterozygote, crossed with homozygous recessive to have one-to-one-to-one to one to one ratio, right? Big B, little P, little. Big P, little P. Big B, little B. Little P, little P. Little B, little B. Big P. Little P. Little B, little B. Little P, little P. Okay, so it should have one-to-one-to-one-to-one to of each of the different genotypes. But it didn't, right? So are these on the same chromosome? No. So because we wanted a hundred, well, let's see, what did we have? Yeah, hundred. Right? But we got this instead. If so, what is the linkage of the genes on the father's chromosome? Okay, so the ones that crossed over, the ones that are the least are the recombinants. Okay, so that means these are the normal ones. Big P, little P, and little B, big P, the mother and father. All right, finally, what is the linkage map distance between the two traits? Well, we take the recombinants, which is 50, and divide it by the total, which is 400. Uh, and then times 100. So this is 12.5%. Alright, that's it for all of them. I'm finished. You know how to do them all.